In today's tutorial, we'll be going over how to make a custom battle bus in UEFN. This is a new version that includes all the recent devices that have been added to the game. So you can make something beautiful like this. Oh my god, look at that. Let's just get right to it. And here it is. This is our battle bus. Now, I know it looks like a lot, but I'm going to break down every single bit of it. So uh, let's get to it. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a trigger, a cinematic sequence, an input trigger, the, this mutator will be put wherever you spawn your player. They obviously gonna need your battle bus. An audio player, you're gonna need an orbit camera. Barrier, you need another mutator zone that's going to be for kicking the player out of the bus. Right now, it's not gonna be here. It's gonna be probably where the, where the battle bus ends. Then we're gonna need another teleporter for inside the bus. So uh, that will teleport the player from this mutator inside of here when the when the thing is done. Then we'll need a teleporter underneath where our player will be at you know teleport out of that was a brief explanation of everything let's just get more into depth okay first the trigger okay this is the trigger that will start our bus at the start of the game this trigger will trigger and there's a delay right here that will like you know five seconds after after game start it will trigger and that's when our bus will begin so you can change this however you like you can make this trigger whenever this trigger will start the bus and you can copy all these settings in if you want uh i might actually turn these off there you go you can copy all these settings in i've already done it myself and that's good then you're going to need a mutator zone this will be the teleport mutator to keep the player into the bus and register the player on the input trigger and camera all right oh yeah i'll explain all in a minute just copy these settings in make a mutator copy all these settings let me turn this off just copy all these settings uh and basically this will enable when start bus so wherever you have your players at the start of the game so if they're either in like a little spawn room or they're they're on an island off the coast or somewhere this mutator will have to be basically everywhere i'll have to cover everywhere in that, in that starting area and that will teleport every single player onto the bus so obviously i have my little spawn pad in here so that's so that's where i'm going to spawn when i go into this map but you can put this your spawners anywhere you can put this mutator anywhere just make sure it's you know set up like this next up we need an input trigger you scroll down all past all of this in here you want you want it to be standard action and you want it to be jump it's very important you want it to consume the inputs and you can show it on HUD if you want and put like a little text like saying jump out of bus or you can turn that off and add your own little HUD like the little jump button but stuff for simplicity's sake we're going to just turn that on uh enable game start you want it on and you want to make sure that registered player behavior is required registered this is important you want it you don't want an add because if it's add you can't remove the input so you want re require register so if let's say if you jump out the bus and you had an add registered on you, you you'd be able to jump out the bus like again if that makes sense <laughs> which like it don't make no sense but anyway this doesn't matter you want a cinematic sequence device in here i'm gonna put it we're gonna make our sequence later but in here this is where our sequence will go and this will be our bus sequence and everything uh, it's fine we'll, we'll go over that later Loop playback, you want that off. Auto play, you want that off. Visibility, you want everyone. Level sequence actor, always relevant. Uh, turn that on. Play rate, doesn't matter. Completion state override. Right now, this is bugged, but um, you probably would want it on keep state. If let's say your sequence ends and suddenly your bus like gets teleported back to the beginning and it's like visible and everything, that's because it's broken, all right? So it, it would work if you had this on, if like, you know, let's say they actually fixed it. It's the bug. <laughs> Who knows, well, when this video comes out, maybe maybe it's fixed by now, but I don't know. Alright, so next up, you want to obviously get an, an orbit camera. And in our orbit camera, this is very important. So this is going to be the camera for the bus. So right now, it's placed like this. And, and you can be able to rotate it in this giant circle. Wherever this line intersects, on, on the sphere is where your player can look. So they can go up here, they can, they, you know, look straight down. They can look up or whatever. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Anyways, you want to just copy these settings in. Uh, all of this you can change if you want, like you can change the distance, change the FOV. I just have it set like this because this, this is what I think is good. High player character, you can turn that off or on. It doesn't really matter because your player is going to be inside the bus, but uh, you can turn that off if you want. Uh, all of this, uh, you, you know, turn that on, turn that off. Boom collision is important. You want that off because your camera will get stuck. Fine, all of this is fine. Next up, we want an audio player, and this audio player will be called Jump Out Noise, okay? It doesn't matter. This is going to be the noise that will play when you jump out the battle bus. So right now, I have it set to battle bus jump. If I go into here, this is what it sounds like. So I uh, I got that off some like, random web, sound effect website, but it's a, the battle bus. So you jump out of the battle bus sound. You can make this anything. I'm going to make it that because, you know, it's classic. It's the classic noise. You wanted to copy all these settings in. Uh, you want to be heard by instigator only and play at the location of the instigating player. So that means if let's say if somebody jumps out, the other players won't be able to hear that noise. So they won't, they won't hear like wee, wee, wee. <laughs> I'll like over and over again. Okay, next up we got our actual bus. And the, this this your bus actually does not matter. 
you don't need to make it look like this. You can make it like a spaceship or anything. So this bus, this is this is a prop that I got in the cotton drawer. So search up party bus and you'll find it, okay? Okay, and then for this, it's uh it's airborne hover platform A. So just search that up in here, you'll find it. And then this is airborne balloon A. Now, okay, there's one big issue, okay? In my last tutorial, we could have used these and it could have been it, it, it worked fine because the way the player the player was outside the bus in my last version. But in this version, you're inside the bus, so the orbit camera can follow the, the bus itself. Now, the issue with this is that you need no collision on the battle bus, on, on this specific part of the battle bus, where the player is standing inside of. But Fortnite props, they can't have no collision. It, it's so stupid. So if I go into static mesh over here, if I scroll down a bit, you can see collision presets. If I try to turn this on to no collision, it does not work. Okay, okay just a quick edit of the video teleporter inside of it just actually just doesn't work because uh the collision of the of the the battle was breaks it so we're going to use a chair device instead and you want to copy in all these settings right here and you want to seat the player when where the mutator is activated and you want to eject the player when they input the thing basically what this will do is that they'll get unseated and they'll be able to teleport and fall out now, from how many players you have in your game, uh, let's say if you had like 20 teams, what you can do is you can have one chair right here, and then you can have another chair. And in this chair, you can do activate team, and you can do team index one, and then next one might be team index two, so on and so forth. So how many how many teams you have? So every single team will have their own chair they can they can, they can jump into, and it should work out. But for this, to make it simple, I'm going to use one chair, but you can have as many chairs as you like. Just make sure they're inside the bus, and make sure player X that enabled is turn off because then they'll be able to hop out and you don't want that to happen okay so next up you want a mutator zone that's going to be inside our bus that is going to cover our or our players will teleport in uh basically this will give the, the players no movements and they'll also uh they also can jump so if you look at this this is what the settings you need so look at all that look at that beautiful like moving multiplier zero so they can jump if you effects on fire allow building all off and all of this make sure your player just cannot move in this mutator zone or can't really do much at all then you want a barrier device that will also be placed inside your inside your your, your bus you could i might change that to three actually that's better cloud rig camera make sure that's off and this doesn't really matter all of this is fine just just copy this into it okay then you want a teleporter on the outside of the, the mutator on the underside of the bus so this is where the player will go when let's say they jump out the bus so you want them maybe copy these settings in if you want make sure skylab after teleport is on otherwise they'll just fall to their deaths <laughs> so yeah, that's that's about it for that then finally you'll need a, one last mutator on the back it won't be here this is the mutator for when you the kick the players out of the bus so let's say our bus sequence if it reaches the end you can put this along the path of the bus and it'll pass through it and once the players go through it they will get kicked out the bus so if they, let's say they don't jump or they, they stay in the bus for too long they can turn all this off so just copy all these settings in as usual copy all of this boom there we go boom we got that thing done next up we want to connect all of our devices together so first what you want to do is in your teleport mutator you want it to enable when the tri this trigger start bus is untriggered then you want your input trigger to register when a player enters this zone. And that remember, this zone will activate when this trigger activates. So when this trigger activates, this, the player will enter the zone and then they'll get a, they'll get this input trigger unregistered to them. Now, next, you want to make sure this input trigger will get unregistered when the player will, will, uh, will exit this zone. Or you want to unregister all players. Now, this is important. This is for a player, this is for all players. You want it to unregister for all players when the sequence, the cinematic sequence is stopped or when it ends or whatever. So the player will get kicked when it ends or you can also do it for when they enter that, the, 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 the kick out mutator zone, if that makes sense. Then in the cinematic sequence device, you want it to start when this trigger gets triggered. Then what you want to do in the orbit camera, you want to add the player when they enter this mutator right here and you want them to remove the player when the input is pressed so when when they when they jump out the bus they'll lose the orbit camera and they'll go back to their regular camera and in the bottom teleporter you want them to teleport into it when you either press the, the input trigger right here or when a player is entering the kicking out of the bus zone and then you want this audio to play 
when the input trigger is, is on input pressed. You also want your, your teleport mutator to enable when the trigger gets triggered. And voila, would you look at that? That's a lot of devices set up. Now this is a lot more simpler than our last one, right? Okay, so let's move on to making the sequence. So you want to go into your cotton drawer, go into here, right click, go into cinematics, make a level sequence. Okay, now this is our sequence for our bus. Uh, in here is a little timeline. I have, a, I have an entire sequence tutorial if you want to figure out the ins and outs of this, but we're just going to just move this thing up to make it about 30 seconds long. That should do. Let the FPS up to 60 seconds. Then what you want to do is grab your bus, uh, grab your little thing right here, grab the, every single thing, your bus, this little barrier, mutator, the teleporter, and your share device. And that should be good. Now with this, you want to press this up on right here, add, add the sequencer, and add current selection seven actors. And now these are all in here now. Now what, what you want to do is click this little prac button, click transform. Now add a transform track to everybody. And then also click it, click it again, and then add an actor hidden in game button. And then now do it there. And then here is all of our stuff. So what we want to do is we just want to grab everything again. On our first key at zero, this is where we're going to start. So this is where we wanted to start. So we're going to press enter. And it's gonna add a key for every single thing. Okay, and now you want to, what do you want to do? You want to go to your very end of the sequence. Do this little thing to the end, about like 30 seconds at the very end. And then we want to move all of this with this little like little green thing right here. Now you want to move this to the other side of your island where you want the battle bus to end. It's probably about here. This is a good spot. And then press enter. Now we have our keys all at the end. So now, if I were to play it, you can now see that our battle bus is now moving. Ooh, that's cool. If you look inside, I think our chair should be going as well. You like see it? <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. So now our battle bus will fly through the sky. Would you look at that? Okay, now another thing you can do is let's add some music to the battle bus. So let's say if you're close to the battle bus, you'll be able to hear some nice tunes. But how would we do that? Well, what we can do is click on our bus which is right here then once i'm up the top then flex this little click this little track button click audio and then you want to search you want to you want to get some bus audio what i have is down in here i have in here i have this bus this music as you can see it's some battle bus music so if i just go to audio search up bb music as you can see we have it right here let me just turn this off. So now I have my battle bus music. We'll pop that in there, make it up to the end. And now this will be attached to our battle bus. So it'll be attached to this little the battle bus right here. Okay, now this will play, but the problem is is that if it's if it's like as you can see it's playing, but the problem is if I go over here, like if I go really far away, you can still hear it. Okay, so we don't really want that. So what we need to do is Right click on this audio, edit section, go down here to override any any attenuation. Click this on, and then you need to make a little annotation asset. So just go into none, sound annotation, just create that. We're gonna call it bus music attenuation. That'll do. Now we have our bus music attenuation. Go into cotton drawer. You can see it's right here. Click into it and just edit this how much you like. It doesn't really matter. Make sure you have spatialization on and this this is fine as well. And then go back in here, edit section, go into none. Add a little new music attenuation, and now, as you can hear, as you can see, you can only hear it very close. I'm actually make that bigger. I might make that bigger. I might make it like 10, 7,000 or something like that. So now you can hear the battle bus as it goes by. Hear that? So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, now another thing you might want to do is you want to grab, you want to hold left click, and you want to grab all your keys, right click, and then make them linear instead of cubic. So that, that'll just help out with uh, you know doing stuff. Then what you also want to do is on all your visible stuff. So you're gonna be your bus, your your little like it's little like flame thing and your balloon. Grab this, grab this, grab this. You can see we have it all selected. I'm gonna press the plus sign, add in an actor hidden in game drag. Then what do you want to do with the first frame? You wanna you wanna click all these so they're off and then press the enter and then add a little frame right there go a frame later then add press click it again and i'll make them visible and then go all the way to the end and then once you're at the end then make them invisible so once your battle bus hits it bases the end it disappears and then what you can also do at the end of this sequence you can add in our little mutators that we made earlier so wherever the bus ends we'll just we'll drag this over so We'll put it right here. Uh, actually, now I think about it, I didn't update this. So I uh, just make sure uh, that the chair device, I uh, will um, will eject the player also 
when they go inside of the zone. I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so now we're done our sequence. So you want to go into your seed cinematic sequence device. Go into sequence. Add a little bus sequence. That should do. There we go. Boom. All right, there's a few things we got to fix first, all right? I tested it, and there's a few problems. So you want the teleporter down here to not teleport when the input trigger is pressed, but when the chair device on player exited. And then what you want to do is select every single thing here, all the all your props, and then go into here in your details, then turn off include hacker and hangsel elite and then turn off is spatially loaded you also want this teleporter to teleport you when if you exit to this zone also the the this thing does not work see this thing right here the little like engine thing i i can't get the work so i'm just gonna not include it so uh yeah that's gonna be gone <laughs> Oh yeah, and another thing, make sure this mutator, you can, you, you can actually move inside of it. So maybe put the mutator movement multiplier up to like 1 or something, or 100. Also, maybe just put its height down to maybe 0.7, so it's inside the bus. Because sometimes you can, if you, if you, you can get stuck up here. And then finally, another thing, in, in, in your orbit camera, you want it to remove from player when you exit the mutator. So hopefully this will work, so let's check it out. Alright, and here is our bus. So if the game begins, as you can see, we are now in our battle bus. This is pretty cool. And on the side, you can see our jump out of bus button. So if we press it, as you can see, we have now jumped out of our battle bus. Isn't that cool? So now we have a working battle bus. And as you can see, you can, this time, this rendition, you can actually move the camera around. Last time, I, we weren't able to move the camera, but now you can due to the orbit camera. So this is pretty cool. Okay, so now there's going to be one issue you're going to notice. And when this bus ends, uh, I'm going to get kicked out, but I'm not going to skydive. That's because right now, at the time of making this video, the reset state of the sequencer is broken and I fall. That's because the, the teleporter is all broken. <laughs> it's, it's because it's all broken, all right? And this will be fixed if, um, the, if, if like, keep state was actually working, okay? But right now, it ain't. Just for a workaround for that. Oh, what, what worked for me anyways was I, I deleted, just want to delete the barrier. Then what you also want to do, just in the teleporter underneath, you want it to, in here, you want to teleport the player. You want to add another one and when the input trigger is pressed. And then lastly, you just want to go into your content browser, go back into the sequence. And then in the sequence, uh, you can delete this if you want because the barrier is gone now. In the chair, you want to press this little plus button. Go into gameplay events, click it, it'll add his new track. And what you want to do is go to the just before the very end of your sequence, like around maybe like here or here, add a low key, and then right click it, and then go into properties, and then you can add in here to uh, eject the player. And this is a little workaround uh, because the problem is, is when the bus ends and the player gets ejected, right now the keep state thing is broken. So the player doesn't, it, it the mutator and everything doesn't work with the teleporter. So this is just a nice little workaround. It worked for me, so hopefully it works for you. And here's just an action to show you that it works. And boom, would you look at that? It actually worked. That's how you fix it anyways. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's about it. If you like and subscribe, uh... Also, use my new code in the item shop. That's a new thing I can say now. Uh, like the video. And also, watch these videos if you want to see some more of my tutorials. That's about it. See you later.